Hi guys, Lion Brew here, uh, episode one. So if you're here, thanks for being here. Uh, today we're going to make a porter. I've called it Hey Porter. Um, I like Johnny Cash. Hey Porter, it's a good song. So no relation to the actual beer, but you know, got to give it a name, haven't we? So it starts off with the malts. Let's go Marisotta. So we've got the base malt there, Marisotta. It's like just base. What's it? Base nothing. Yeah, just it's in. You need it. You haven't got any base, you've got no beer. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Maris Otter. I prefer it over extra pale or pale malt because it's got like a little bit of extra. Good for like hot the porters and stuff, you know, you want you want all, all more flavour in there, it's not it's not a pale ale, you know. Pale, boring, pale malt. Maris Otter. God, what a cool name, it's even nicer, yeah. So yeah, we've got that, lovely. Got some Munich, that's a uh, biscuity, a little bit darker, still a base malt technically, but a little bit less enzyme activity in there. So you could do 100% Munich, but probably not recommended. Yeah, so that's the two base malts, Maris Otter and Munich. Special W, I've never tried it before, but I saw it on the, um, the website and I thought, sounds good. Apparently it's got some raisins in, that smells bad, it's got some raisin smells, give the malt a little chew, it's got some raisin taste, so it's raisin. Why not? Well it'd be nice. Uh, caramel, that's like a really low colour crystal malt, it's like caramelised so it gives you some nice caramel flavours in there. Uh, light chocolate, again as I said it's chocolate, so chocolatey flavours sort of, but as it's light not too much roast because it's, it's not a stout, we don't want like big robust roasty stout, we want it nice and sort of mellow and smooth and more sweet. And then Carafa Special, again we don't want the roasty bitterness that you get with like say roasted barley which is just black and bitter and you know it's just turning into a stout again. We wanted it to be nice and rounded and a porter. So they take the husk off the Carafa Special, it gets rid of the bitterness I don't know. Maybe that's why they call it special. I don't know. But it's nice stuff. It has a bit of a chocolate flavour as well. So should be a good malt bill for porter. I've got that at the minute mashing in the kitchen. Got a little uh, pot set up. Nothing fancy. Just so and anyone can brew this. It's just uh, two pots. One's 20 litres. One's 10. One's for the mash. One's for the sparge. And you just get it all boiled up together, stick it in the fermenter, and that's it, you're done. So, once the mash is done, we'll boil that up. We've got some hops here Challenger and Brandon Cross. And Challenger's just for bittering, so you're not really going to get too much flavour in that one. But Brandon Cross, I think you get some black currant, apparently. I've actually only used it once and I haven't finished the beer yet, so who knows? Could be nice. I've, uh, I've had a test of the, the uh, previous beer, but it's not bottled yet. But We'll see if that's any good. Then in the yeast we've got Cross Maloof Midland. That is like a Nottingham apparently. And again, it's a new yeast, I haven't tried it before, but I was on the Cross Maloof website and they had a deal on yeast. So let's go for their yeast. Why not? Yeast is yeast. All right, so I've got the mash water on. Where are we at now? Just under 40 there. Just waiting on that. And whilst that's going, I'll measure out all the malts. Got my marathon already done, just all the others. All right, so the mash water is heated up, just over 70 there, 71, dropping a bit. Usually like about 70 to 72 degrees before we chuck in all the malts, the mash. There we go, there's all the malts already weighed. Got marathon in there, the bottom, Munich, special W, get that one. There's Caramel, Carafa Special, and some light chocolate in there. And we're just going to chuck all of this into the brew water and give it a good stir. Leave it for an hour. There we go. There's the mash. Give it a good old stir. Make sure there's no big clumps in there because 
and the water can't get to it properly. And you've got less efficiency. Yeah, good old stir. Get it all mixed up. And check the temperature. Should hopefully be around 65. Try it. I always keep a little jug next to it, cold in case I'm too high. You just add that in, cool it down a little bit. And if it's too cold, you just turn the burner on again. All right, 63 is good. Good conversion there, dry a bit. This one obviously is a porter. You want it a bit more, a bit more sugars left over when you ferment it, so a bit higher. So 65 in a minute. 67 max I'll go for if not I'll put some more in there we go 60 so it's going to be about 66 good middle ground there yeah 65.8 perfect that will do now we just close the lid leave it for an hour give it a stir halfway through Mash is nearly done. Okay, oh, smelling lovely that is. Oh, blimey. So, uh, better get the hops weighed out, ready for the boil. So we've got some Challenger here, and some Browning Cross upside down, because I left it upside down, I'm like a fool. But anyway, so we want 13 grams of Challenger, so get some of that in there. If I can open the damn thing. Ooh, blackout. Ooh, I can't see. Right. Give him a sniff. Always have to give him a sniff. In case they're not hops. Oh, oh they're always hops. Anyway, so. Ooh, not too much there. 15. Blimey. Good scales of these. We want that. Oh my gosh, come on. Ooh, there, uh, a bit under, a bit over. Oh, let's break. Let's break one up. Wee, right, that will do. Got 13.03 there. I'm not going to complain about that. So that's the Bramling Cross. Not sure we keep that one there. I know which it is. It's um, Bramley Cross, Challenger, sorry. Oh, mixed them up already. Right, so, get that on there, give it a tear. Now, we want 15 grams of Bramley Cross. Oh, these smell good as well, lovely. A bit more fruit in these ones than the others. Where we go? Oh, 1501. Right, that'll do. Oh, yeah, no, 1501. And now we just gotta wait for the boil. Right, it's been an hour, or well, just over. So the mash is done. Sniff there. See, it's getting nice, nice and dark looking in there. I hope, well, can't really see. There we go. Be in the corner. Not too dark. Between a brown and a, well, not quite black ale, the porter, so yeah, looks about right to me, Let's give it a good stir, make sure it's all, all coming out there, there we go, sparge water's on, let's have a look where we at, we're almost 80 on there, so... Give that a couple of minutes. Whilst I get this bag out, it should be up to temperature. Yeah. Dripping off, lovely. Nice dark brown ale. Mm. Right, so 
malt successfully in the bucket. That's what's left behind. Let's give that a little. Let's have a look at that. Nice chocolatey brown. Now what we need to do is we take this sparge water, which is, yep, yeah, up to temperature, turn it up. Don't want any gas explosions with this super old gas hob. Ooh, look at that. So that's there. 80 degrees, the thermometer's actually off, so probably a bit under. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour that into here and then through some tubing, rinse these drains and all that lovely sugar that's left on them into here. So we've got a full volume there to boil up, add the hops and there's our beer. That tube all hooked up into this little bucket. We've added the sparred water, so give it a good old stir. And then trickle, or should trickle, down the pipe. Have to lift the bag a bit. There you go. That sounds like a morning after the night out on curry. Looks like it too. <laughs> But yeah, so that's sparging. Just gonna to keep topping this up with water from here. And once that's all done, get the bag out, give it a good old squeeze, and start the boil. All right, sparge is all done now, and we've left this to go up to the boil. Look at that, lovely. And that little foam on top, so. Give that a stir around, get it all. Now, time for the hops. First of all, we've got Challenger. This goes in for 60 minutes of the boil, gives us the bitterness we want. Not much flavour because it all gets boiled away. So, give that a little sniff. Lovely. Stick that in. There we go. No bags needed because I have a big bag for afterwards where I'll just pour all the beer through and it will filter it out for me. So stir that in, give it, watch it. Make sure it doesn't boil over because you don't want to lose any of your precious beer. And I think that's good. So we give that, well, it needs an hour, but we've got the other hops, the Bramling Cross, and they need to go in at 10 minutes before the end. So 50 minutes for this, and then we'll come back, stick these in for the last 10 minutes before we cool. Right, time to stick the Bramling Cross hops in. Last 10 minutes of the boil. Okay, give it a nice stir. Back on a 10 minute timer. And that is your brewing done. Well, first stage anyway. Right, 10 minutes is just about up. So that's the boil done. So what do we do now? Well, we need to get it as cool as possible, as quickly as possible. So, number one, turn off the burner. Number two, get it cool. So, what I like to do, I call it my ghetto chilling option. So I get three two litre bowls, just from, you know, soda, whatever. And I just whack it in. See, I give them a good clean beforehand, which I've already done, and bang! Three bottles fit in my pot nicely. Obviously, if you're doing bigger volumes, it won't work, and you need to get a proper cooler. But for now, at my level of brewing, see, perfect water level. Now, this is what we do. Eventually I have to buy a coil, and then you, what you do is you plug that into your tap, and you put the coil in to this, and then you turn the tap on, and it cycles cold water through the coil and out, 
And then what that does is it takes the heat and transfers it into the, the water in the coils. And then goes down the drain. Or you can like save it into a bucket, water the plants or something. But for now, this is what I'm doing. Ghetto chilling. Three frozen bottles and I just whack it in. And you can see there, all of this, see? All the cold break, all the proteins are being cooled rapidly. That will sink to the bottom and give you a lovely clear beer at the end of it. But yeah, so there we go, cooling. Just got to leave this now to get to about 20 degrees Celsius. We're not in America, are we? Blimey. Um, and then I'll stick it in the fermenter. Right, the porter is now nice and chilled, about 20 degrees. And look at that, lovely and dark. Looks like dark chocolate from here. A bit lighter in the sample. We've got about 152 on the hydrometer. Let's keep that in focus. There we go. There we go, dead on, which was the target. So it should be around 5% when it's finished. All that's left to do is to chuck it in here on top of the last brew's yeast cake and then seal it up for two weeks and let it ferment. All right, so the beer's all brewed up now. It's in the fermenter. Got the Midland yeast in there chugging away. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get some bubbles in the airlock and uh, I'll leave it for two weeks. Like, no touching, you don't want to open it, get any air in there, spoil it. So leave it for two weeks, come back, check the gravity. Hopefully it's hit the limit and uh, have a nice porter to bottle up. And then, yay, bottling day. Everyone loves that. So uh, yeah, if you liked my show, give me a like, uh, click the bell, subscribe, you know, all that jazz. You know how it works now, YouTube, right? So yeah, thanks for watching.